Hi folks, uh, welcome to Alone in the Dark 2024. Um, this is an interesting remake of the first Alone in the Dark game, uh, which many people would say is pretty much the grandfather of survival horror. Um, I think there are technically some examples of survival horror games that existed before this. Um, Ragnarok has great videos covering that stuff if you're interested in learning more about that. But uh, most people would point to, I think, the very first Alone in the Dark as the first true survival horror game. And uh, this is a remake of it. You may have heard about it. It stars Jodie Comer and um, David Harbour which is weird uh really odd bizarre <laughs> uh bizarre thing there going for this game but uh if you look a little bit deeper under the surface this game suddenly becomes very interesting so this game was developed by pieces interactive and uh published by thq nordic um pieces interactive is a studio you might not have heard of uh, but you've definitely heard of some of the games uh, that the people there have made, which is to say this game was written and directed by the, by the guy who did uh, Soma and Amnesia. So that's fucking crazy. <laughs> like, that should be interesting to anyone who likes video games and likes horror games specifically. Um, so I'm very intrigued by that. Um, but perhaps the most interesting aspect of this game, and the reason why I kind of purchased it on a whim today to stream when I was not intending to, uh, this game is getting slaughtered in the mainstream video gaming press. Like, IGN and, uh, Eurogamer gave it, like, fours and twos out of ten. But weirdly universally all of the art game critics that i like love this remake and think it's awesome so like ragnar thought it was great uh people like g-man lives and ben again thought it was really great and i've been seeing youtube videos all day just hit my feed of like the new Alone in the Dark is actually good. This is a return to PS2 era survival horror. It's like Rule of Rose. Uh, and that made me raise an eyebrow because what? Uh, what? So I, I think there might be some, some interesting stuff going on here with uh, critical expectations. I think obviously high fidelity kind of big budget remake of an old school survival horror game most people are going to immediately compare it to like the resident evil remakes um but apparently this game is like a weird ps2 era novelty and i am so here for it so we're gonna go ahead and play alone in the dark 2024 and see how this is Uh, resources are scarce. We'll play in hard mode. Whatever. I'm not scared. Uh, we'll play on old school detective mode. Frog. Pretty. Looks like RE7. So, your uncle. What's wrong with him? He's possessed. As in the devil? Something like that. He says a dark man is following him. Watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course. But I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? 
No, detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. But Jeremy didn't kill himself. Is that why he's at Gersetto? Despite being convinced that he is truly possessed, he decided to put his last chips on Dr. Gray and his psychoanalysis, figuring he might stumble upon some cure. You mentioned the letter. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to get him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. Huh. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hartwood because he isn't worth getting. Yet here we are. Raph asks, is that the Killing Eve girl? Yeah, that's Jodie Comer. And the sheriff from Stranger my Things. My uncle's not well, Mr. Carnby. I want to make sure he's all right. Then what's my part in this? You couldn't get a cab? I just wouldn't feel safe going alone. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? No. But you might need to wave it around, depending on how agreeable the staff will be. What exactly are we gonna do when we find Jeremy? I don't know. Let's just find him first. All right. So I knew this was coming because this is a thing in the original game. You can actually choose which character to play. So even back in the early 90s, uh, the, one of the very first survival horror games had a split between a playable male character and a playable female character. And uh, I believe that was also the same reason why Resident Evil 1 had a choice between Jill and Chris. We'll play as Emily. Hello? It's so quiet. Where is everyone? This is a big place. Maybe they're on the other side of the house. Stay here. I'll have a look. Fascinating. Okay. So, pretty standard survival horror. Looks about how I'd expect. A little floaty in movement, but not too bad. Oh. Oh, we got a gun. She's got a gun. And what's his name had a gun, too. Let's see what my buttons do. Pressing Y zooms out my camera. Oh, it makes her sneak. Okay. Oh, physics. L3 is sprint. R3 does nothing. One of the bumpers zooms in. Okay. Um, Okie doke. How do I interact? I presume there will be interaction prompts. Camera sensitivity is a little crazy, but... What's this? Flashlight. Clue. Okay. Kitchen garden key. Okay. Okay. Okay, R3 switches flashlight on and off. Uh, this game doesn't look half bad. I don't hate this. I don't hate this already. Yeah. 
Hey Goose, welcome. Hello everyone who is watching. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, interesting. This feels like a PS2, <laughs> a PS2 survival horror game already in a lot of ways. I mean, it's got the smatterings of a remake and an RE. RE2 make, was that a kitty or a monster? Who can say? Uh, the last time, so the last time I played Alone in the Dark 1, it was the 3DO version of the game. Uh, and I don't think I'll be able to get in there. It was years ago. I played it when I was young, like the original game on DOS, way back in the day, like in the 90s. Um, and I remember almost none of it. I, I I know the plot beats for the most part of the first game and some of the big scares and stuff, but I'm curious how faithful of a remake this is going to be. I don't want to waste bullets yet if bullets are going to be scarce. My guess is that with sneaking being a thing, there will be a reason. There would be a there'd be a reason to turn off my flashlight rather than have it on all the time. This is a cool, cool spooky tree. Bayou horror is a lot of fun, kind of interesting, flavorful. Okay, we got the housekeeper's key. Peacemill says, did you say EDO? What the hell is that? No, the 3DO. It was a game console. Well, I don't think I'll be able to get in there. bullets that's good we'll take that uh ooh. okay a long engagement when i get back john marcus 1918 oh she's got a she's got a honey jeremy's warning dearest emily dercetto is the prey of evil and now they are all in on it the staff and all the patients are nothing more than a mindless cult set to awaken the bayou i see now that it was wrong of me to try to survive the madness of the dark man. You'll also learn that soon enough. Every hour that passes where I deny him his right to my sanity makes it worse for the people I care about. He perfectly staged this world in order to conduct my fall. And I have to fall, Emily. Stay away, my dearest niece. Stay as far away from Dorsetto as you can. Someday you may understand what I have done. God forgive me. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. Oh no. <laughs> Game lost control of the mouse. Interesting. There you go. So someone was drinking here. We got a key, but it doesn't go to the lock out there. This isn't openable, so I guess we'll just have to go up. Oh, we can't. There's too many plants. Too many plants on the staircase. I enjoy this. I'm liking this. This is a good vibe so far. I wonder how open it's going to be. Because it's I'll already setting stuff that I can't uh, can't interact with yet. Hmm. Family Bible. Every day your silence weighs a little heavier. 
It's been a difficult year for everyone, and many have lost all hope. I read in the papers about people suffering. Pictures of dust-covered landscapes without a drop of water. I wish I knew if you were still tending the earth or if you had turned your back against us. I have started to look for help elsewhere. I pray you will tell me if I am going down a path that you find disagreeable. With help from Batiste and Charlotte, I have found comfort in the practice of the voodoo. I have long been skeptical of that Caribbean cult, but it's been of good use to me. It seems all harmless in my book. I say some words dreamt up by the Creoles, and I carry around a small pocket of Grigri. Nothing of this is mentioned in the Bible, of course, but the French quarter priestess tells me it's all connected. She says the Christian God is just one more perspective on the creator of things. That's what I like to think, but the other way around, that the spirits of her faith are just aspects of you, our Heavenly Father. I am so grateful for the words you gave Mr. Hartwood. We will sing your praises at St. John's Eve. The world will be blessed soon again. Hmm. Only the sacrifices of the Old Testament compare to your demands. Let it be the truth. A mother of earth, wood, and dirt. A mother of a thousand young. Sacred sun, one dollar. Black cat oil, dollar fifty. Devil shoe strings, a quarter. That makes two dollars and seventy-five cents, madame. What was that you were telling the doctor? A goat without horns. What does that mean? Ah, you must have misheard me, madame. I said no such thing. Please. I know I don't look like any of you, but I'm devout. I'm ready to do what it takes. Mm, do not be so eager to sacrifice the few things you have left, madame. Now please, leave my store. A goat without horns. Huh. What does that mean? This is interesting. It was interesting that there was like a little vignette at the end there that like wasn't part of this. I, huh. Is That's very interesting. <laughs> um, I feel like a goat without horns is referenced somewhere else. There was like, I think there was like a game or a movie or something that I played that was referencing that. What is it? I don't know, but uh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy right now that the game reads out its texts for me so that I don't need to do the reading. That's amazing. <laughs> the performances are okay so far. I mean, the uh, of the the voice uh, the voice actor there, like the old lady. That was, that was pretty solid. All right, so drinks appear to be our healing items. We're allowed to steal all we want. There's something upstairs. I gotta say, game supports ultra wide out of the box as well. That's pretty nice. I don't know if I wanna go in there. Let's go over here. Oh, I wonder if I can fast throw doors. Sabotage. Please do not touch the boiler. It is working after all. <laughs> While the sabotage has caused a leak, only the decorative plate has been completely ruined. Let's wait for Mr. Chance to turn up and he can take a look at the leak. Mr. Waits. Pretty sure that's uh, Yuri Lowenthal. You can recognize that voice anywhere. Ah, look at this here. We got a little, we got a little puzzly, little puzzly to do. It doesn't look safe. Okay, all right. We're already kicking. We're already kicking with the survival horrorisms. That's not terrible so far. Okay. 
pistol bullets. More pistol bullets. I'm getting... They said that the supplies were supposed to be scarce. Streetcar ticket. Lonnie Oppie. Sets completed. Crescent City Forbidden Knowledge. What is this? Huh? I don't know what that means. I, I'm not familiar Sup with that word. Surprised by her own reckless decision, Emily found herself breaking into Dorsetto. She mulled over how to present her story in case she got caught, but couldn't think of anything that sounded convincing. Oh, can I read this out loud? Surprised by her own reckless decision, Emily found herself breaking into Dorsetto. She mulled over how to present her story in case she got caught, but couldn't think of anything that sounded convincing. She wasn't much of a fast talker. Best to find a way to open the front door and let Detective Khan be inside so he can handle the situation. So Laniapis are non-essential items that you can find throughout the game, completing sets will uncover forbidden knowledge and sometimes even more. Okay, so we're gonna want to try to find as many of them as possible. Or Lagniaps. I'm not I have no idea how to pronounce that. It doesn't look like any word I'm familiar with. It might be Creel. Huh. This is a fascinating game. This is gonna lead upstairs. Don't wanna go there yet. They're really setting up that there's like, this seems like a pretty big mansion. Wow. more drinks so we got lots of healing that's not vegan rat poison great depression okay what was that I don't know lady what was it is there anything changed out here Oh, the oven's open. Just looked like burn food was in there. Neat. Ooh, whoa, spooky. I guess this is just religious. This isn't spooky, that's religious. I shouldn't be insensitive. Sorry to all the Christ heads in chat. Gamers and stuff said uh, it comes from Louisiana French and it just means bonus or extra gift. Gotcha. That would explain why I don't understand it. I speak Canadian French. Imagine having a clawfoot tub and not cleaning your bathroom. Imagine having such a luxurious bathroom and not cleaning it. Marvelous Science, a weekly review of progress in industry, science, invention, and mechanics. Books are obsolete. This game is making a positive first impression. Sunday, June 22nd. I spent all day looking for Jeremy. I should have cared for the others, but I'm scared that he will do something irreversible. Cassandra is upset that I didn't give her the latest shipment of pain medication that Waits brought from the post office yesterday. I would have given it to her, but the company didn't send a new key this time around, so the box is just sitting there on my desk. They must have figured we had plenty of their gimmicky keys by now. I only remember seeing one lately. Grace was playing with it inside the grand parlor. Unless it turns up by itself, it will have to wait. I have to figure out where Jeremy is. I think Jack knew something. That dog of his found a strange rot permeating the house. She's showing us, he said. Like those blots and streaks of fetid rot was talking to him. 
I still don't think that's an excuse to not clean your really nice bathroom. Morphine home first aid kit or something. I guess they said this was an institution of some kind. Evening, Pergy. Uh, Dorsetto floor plans. Okay. Uh, hey, we got a map. We got a map, and it, it retroactively marks everything. This is good. I like that. I like that a lot. Piazza key. Ah, oh, what's this? That is a good question. I don't know. Is it possible it goes into Oh my god, it marks puzzles too. Okay, this looks this is exciting. I'm excited. I need the key. I need the key. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. I already went in there, right? Yeah, this is the bathroom. Okay. I love the layout of this house and the, the like, the 1920s vibe of it. I don't know when this game takes place. It might be like 1930 or 1940 or something. It looks important. Game looks hella good though. It's wet shut. Can you just push it back? We can unwedge that. Okay. That's the front door there, I think, right? If you look at the map. Maybe. No. The pick a Yoon post. The Great Depression. President Hoover raises tariffs on over 20,000 imported goods in an act to protect American labor. Following the collapse of the Wall Street stock market on October 24 last year, American industry has suffered greatly. Thousands of companies have gone bankrupt <coughs> and left a large part of the American workforce unemployed. In an attempt to turn the tide, the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act has been signed by President Herbert Hoover. By regulating commerce with foreign countries, the government hopes to encourage the industries of the United States to compete with cheap foreign imports. Mm. Superstition on rise. New Orleans voodoo stores and spiritual mediums see increased profit during troubled times. While the market has faced hard times ever since Black Thursday of last year, voodoo doctors and snake charmers see significant rise in number of customers. With the coming eve of St. John on the 23rd, the police expect increased cult activity around Bayou St. John, the southern shore of Lake Pontchartrain. Voodoo rituals in that area on the eve of St. John have a long tradition reaching back to the first snake worshippers brought as slaves from West Africa. During the 19th century, its practice was popularized by the legendary Marie Laveau and has since been embraced by many of the Creoles and the surviving aristocracy of the French Quarter. Author Seeks Asylum Rumors regarding author Cassandra Beauregard making Dorsetto her home verified. Dorsetto Hospital is an old plantation building on the eastern shores of Lake Pontchartrain. 
while often considered an asylum for the insane, residing Dr. Elmore Lee Gray prefers to think of it as a convalescent home, a place where you can go to rest. The patient list is kept secret, but thought to include many of the black sheep of wealthy families, because at Dosetto treatment does not come for free. Local author Cassandra Beauregard has now been confirmed by her own admission. She's been lauded as a powerful Creole voice and written many successful books. Lately it was reported from Hollywood that she has finished a moving picture manuscript titled Slaughter Gulch. That film is set to hit the theaters next year. So it does say the date on the newspaper, so June 13th, 1930. So this must have been, I mean, assuming it is somewhat recent because it's on a table in a place that people allegedly work at, um, this takes place in the 30s. Oh, no, I didn't want to press that. I'm feeling very smug right now. Because I'm I'm sitting here deeply enjoying the uh the very positive first impression this game is making and it's making me think that one either the game it's really terrible as it goes on contributing to like issues with the critical reception that the game has gotten on its opening day by mainstream outlets or I'm smart and cool and have good taste and IGN is dumb as hell and I really relish the opportunity for the second option to be the case Wait, don't! No. Excuse me? Do you know where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? Of course not. McCarthy, what are you doing? I told you not to lose sight of the girl. Don't you worry, Mags. I'll find that little rascal. Who are you people? What are you doing here? I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. His name is Jeremy Hartwood. What are you doing, child? You shouldn't be alone. Go find McCarthy. Who are you? Are you here for the Fay Dodo? Go upstairs now. My name is Emily <laughs> Hartwood. I, I, I'm, I'm the niece of Jeremy Hartwood. This is Detective Carnby. The police? Why are you here? No, I'm a private investigator. Sorry to bother you. My client's worried about her uncle. He's a patient here at Tercetto. If you don't mind, could you direct us where to find him? No, I can't. Jeremy has gone missing. If you leave your information, I will make sure to contact you. Wait, he ran away? No, he won't leave the house. He's around here somewhere and both of our orderlies are looking for him. That's unacceptable. Where's Dr. Gray? I want to speak with him immediately. Fine, I'll ask him. Wait here and don't touch anything. Do you want to see Jeremy's room? Can you show us? Follow me. I love this. I feel like I'm watching like a... I feel like I'm playing Deadly Premonition. <laughs> but like in a really good way. This is, it perfectly understands PS2 Thank survival you. horror. <laughs> what a vibe. Strange kid. This immaculate. <laughs> mm. Let's look around, see what we can find. Can't interact with that, okay.
commonplace book. Every night the dark man stands opaque at the threshold of my room, counting the days until my spirit spills out of my tired shape. Only his pallid mask shelters my remaining sanity, staring directly into the face of that demonic sultan would surely sunder time itself. Would he have looked the same to my father as he struggled for his life? Does his veiled face haunt my niece quite the same way? I wish so that I could rest my soul in that sunburnt convent of Tarawea. Would I find you there, Juan? Or Signora Pirosi, back from the beyond? Every night I hide from him, moving from one misshapen memory to another. Scenes conjured out of fantasy and delirium. Places I struggle to even paint. I wish I understood your death, Signora. Is there anything I could do for you but bury you in that bleak necropolis? That triumphant chapel rising above the ledges and the oven vaults shall be your sepulchre where you may rest, and I shall weep. Fascinating. How did you first come to understand such things, Signora? How did you know that the battered boil in the basement would lead me to Lafayette Cemetery? Or how the old upstairs clock with its astronomical motifs would take me to that hateful mound outside of Claremont Harbor? Those are my memories, my past. Is there perhaps a chance, if ever so small, for me to see Tarawaya? Oh, I want that more than anything. Please, let my talisman take me there. Let me sit with Juan under his Bodhi tree. Despite having sold me that talisman, Miss Jackson, the voodoo priestess, revealed none of her secrets to me. That's why I had to travel to Tonka. Instead, she cruelly told Baptiste, my caretaker, that he would be betrayed and killed in the most awful way, that the one he loved would pierce his thigh with a sharp spear, and that he would be devoured by his own mother. What a terrible thing to say. Hmm. So it's interesting. So this book has given us one with multiple pages. I'll have to check the other stuff that we've picked up to see if they also have multiple pages that I didn't notice. The people of Deseto will become dangerous. They do not understand what they are doing. I must do something to stop them. I tried talking to Dr. Gray, but he confuses my worries. He's caught up in treating me. How can he expect evil to be cured with medicine and conversation? <laughs> the orderlies, the housekeeper, and the patients are all deranged. They will call upon evil to enter this world. All will be lost. Everything. Unless I can find the clerk, Mr. Waite. He seems to be a clear-thinking man. Maybe Beauregard. Hmm. The performances, the voice acting here is like genuinely really excellent on these journal entries. The dark man offered me a prison, and I accepted I signed that miscarried contract and entered the dark pact. Everyone is safe, except for me. Hmm, talisman plates. There are always three numbers. Does that say stern, stem? Uh, Gemini... Vir Virgo Pisces is that Virgo or is that Scorpio I don't do astronomy 358 am I gonna have to actually interact with stuff oh I'm so here for this oh my god I'm so here for this I found a commonplace book. What's that? A notebook with all kinds of stuff in it. Do you know a place called Tarawea? 
Never heard of it. Is it close? I've no idea. Just seems like it was a place Jeremy wanted to visit. Hmm. Good to know. Hmm. Hey. Have you ever seen anything like this? Looks like a talisman. You mean like this one? Can you find me a knife to cut the canvas? I want to take this with me. You want to take the painting? Sure, I'll find one. Her eyes look very wet. You ever, you ever think about that? Your eyes are wet. You have wet eyes. I found this tube as well, to keep it safe for you. Do you want to carry it or should I? Miss Hartwood. Emily? I'll take it. Thank you. We're done here, right? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know how to do any of this. Listen, I think we should talk to Dr. Gray. He must know something about what's going on around here. Okay. Let's do that. Come on, I don't want to be here all night. <laughs> Detective Carnby? W where did... Huh. Did we just get Silent Hilled? Or did time skip? Did we lose time? What on earth is happening? What is this place? This is cool. <laughs> this is neat. 